Barb, you can have it. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Barb, I'm going to mute everybody and then I'm going to mute. I don't know how to get it on. Send out your light and your truth, that they may lead me and bring me to your holy hill and to your dwelling. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with permission and with penitence and obedient hearts, confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips.
and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord, our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 119, your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The, the lessons. Isaac and Rebekah welcome their sons Esau and Jacob. Like many siblings, their relationship is a struggle. Jacob lives up to his trickster title as a young man. The reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramean of Padam Aram, sister of Laban and the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, if it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man, living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore, he was called Edom. Jacob said, first, sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob, sweat, Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him, 
and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. The second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens, and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome. God has transformed, transformed us, empowering us for his service to do the good and the right rather than to sin and do evil. From Romans. There is not, therefore, now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do, by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And to deal with sin, he condemned sin in the flesh, so that the just requirement of the law might be, be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his Spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Together, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O king of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near you and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Thanks, scattered in song. We see in the parable of the sower how a lesson on how God has formed the world to function. A reading from Matthew. Jesus went out and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole world stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables saying, listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the world, word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word. But the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. morning. I have a little liturgy that was written by an English group called Sanctuary, and it's called the Arable Parable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds ate it up. Maybe you've been on this path so long that the only way ahead of you that you that's, it's the only way ahead that you can see. So busy that you couldn't keep track of the journey. Maybe you looked up one day to realize you'd come further than you thought down this track. Maybe the things that happened to you along the way have only hardened your heart further. Perhaps you have become along the way impenetrable. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Some fell on rocks and stones where it didn't have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no roots. It isn't hard to feel rootless in this fast and changing world. People and places come and go, relationships shift and change, security and permanence are often an elusive quarry. And eventually you give less deeply, engage less enthusiastically. Enjoyment becomes short-lived, nothing satisfied, nothing offers, nothing offers substance. You'd put down roots if only you knew where to begin. A farmer went out to sow his seed. Some fell among thorns which grew up and choked the plants. It's easy to become distracted. Our culture conspires to suck us in to the feeding frenzy of wanting and having and wanting more. Stop. Stand back. What do you really need? A farmer went out to sow his seed and some fell on the good soil where it produced crop. A hundred or sixty or thirty times what was sown. Ask any gardener, good soil doesn't really happen. Good soil is the result of work. It has had the weeds removed painstakingly by hand. It has been dug and turned and fed and enriched. It has been prepared. This may take several seasons. Open your heart and allow God to begin. So parables, we all know, we've heard often enough, um, parables ask us to think outside the box, to look at things, truths, in a different way so that we pay attention to them because they're different. And... Jesus used them a lot to get his point across. So, so different for this one, but what a story. 
can you just imagine Jesus so uninvaded by the crowds and by people who longed to touch him? By now, word had spread that he was a healer and that the very touch of his garment could bring healing to people. So imagine his life when he was in a crowd of a million people pressing in and wanting to touch his robe and wanting to be near him and with him. And so he solved that problem on this occasion. He just hopped into a boat and rode out just a little bit so they could still hear him, but nobody could touch him and nobody could, you know, drive him crazy while he was trying to talk. Um, he just needed some space to get his message across. And, and of course, we know he didn't stay in that boat. He came back to shore and, and did more healing and more um, work in the midst of the people. But this is one occasion where, you know, if you've ever had burnout, you can empathize with Jesus as he just thought, I just got to, I got to get a little, little space between myself and these crowds of people. So anyway, I think that the bottom line for this scripture is really that it's about conversion. And I don't know about you, I feel like I had one big conversion, but thankfully in our faith, if, if it's clear that we can have many different conversions over the space of time. Maybe you wouldn't call them conversions, but would call them awakenings. Um, that we might have a, a slow kind of silent awakening. We might have something dramatic that just draws us in. Um, but what the story is talking about is how our particular seed connects with Christ's soil and begins to bear fruit. And um, um, there are lots of different ways that soil can, f seeds can fall and um, they're all spelled out in this parable. Um, I think it's also important to hear in the parable that God personally scatters the seed and he scatters it by hand. You know, I meant to get a little basket that I was going to show you this morning, and maybe at coffee hour I can get it. But it's a little little basket, beautifully woven with a couple of um, loops on the the rim of the basket. And uh, when we lived in the Philippines, my friend Darla and I uh, discovered that either things were horrifyingly wild and crazy, or dreadfully dull. And so when they were dreadfully dull, we'd get driver Fred to drive us down to where they sold all the baskets. And somehow or another, one of us said, we, we love these little baskets. We thought they were so sweet and they're beautiful, just beautifully woven. And we thought that the woman that sold us these baskets said that they were snail baskets. And so you know, we were hopping along and we would ask people in the shops if they had any snail baskets and they'd look at us like we were kind of half bats. And finally I saw one and I said, yeah, like this. She said, no, 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 no. Those are seed baskets. And so the little loops would fit on the belt uh, or the cording around the farmer's waist. And he could reach down into the basket get a handful of seed and just scatter it wherever he went. He was not scattering snails, which is probably a good thing because snails are sometimes good for gardens, I guess. But I think if I believe my sister, they're not the greatest anyway. So the, the maker, our maker, our creator, our redeemer is scattering the seed from a seed basket on his belt. And where it lands, um, well, that makes a big difference. Now, the thing I think is important to know is that um, we can change our seed jacket whenever we want to. And we also have the abilities, 
most of the time to allow ourselves to be kind of picked up by the wind and tossed over to better soil if that's our aim. And so what we're urged to do in this kingdom of God this morning by the sower is to, if we find ourselves in the Walmart parking lot, scrapping around for a piece of dirt to make us grow, we have the responsibility of going back to our maker and saying, I'd rather be in the garden, please. And thank you. Um, our maker is always ready to improve our lot as seeds, I really believe. And that it depends on us in a way. Um, once we have made that conversion, we open a door where we are brought into a different place. We are gods. We are called to this conversion again and again and again. Now, God is a part of our lives from the very beginning. He made us. He's in charge of us. He loves us. He wants us to get to know him. He watches over us. At our baptism, the arrangement is formalized. We are marked as Christ's own forever by the Holy Spirit. And God is present with us always, scattering abundant seeds. But as we grow older, if we have fallen on fertile ground, we will begin to realize that this is a relationship that's give and take, that we are invited into it. We don't have to, we're baptized. That gets you right into heaven, I think. Your, it, your name is in the book and uh, you're covered. But there's more to this than just that. And that is a relationship with this living God. And the minute you realize that it's reciprocal and that God is in your life with you as you are with God, then the relationship really begins to take off and grow. It's as if you've landed in fertile ground. So I think our story is about this, about beginning to realize and own and come into a relationship that the Lord is just waiting to have with us. And some of us, some of you, are already deeply ingrained in a relationship like that. Some of you are kind of on the sidelines. And well, you know, do I dare to believe this, that the living Lord is true and in my life and willing and able to communicate with me somehow or another. Um, I think that one of the most amazing things of my life is how uh, in these uh, ongoing, I guess you could call them ongoing conversions, but I'd say um, this ongoing relationship with the Lord, that he knows us so intimately, so deeply, so well, that when he communicates with us, it's always exactly what will touch our hearts the most and what will pull us into relationship the most. I'm always just amazed when I sense one of these connections because it isn't some kind of high flown theology that you would read in a book. I mean, Jesus comes to you and talks to you like your mother did when you were little and, you know, you were being held or like your grandmother did when she was reading you a story or like somebody dear in your life would come to you and talk to you. With, you know, um, uh, Jesus can talk baby talk. I don't know if you know that or not, but he really can. I, um, I kind of laugh when I think about this, but my grandfather um, uh, used to call his grandkids, um, individ you know, when, when he was talking to us, 
individually. I think it was all his grandkids. I know it was me. He would, when, and when we were really little, I mean, under five, I would guess, he would call us, or me, Heine Biney. Now, where he got that, I have no idea. Might have been some kind of Scottish thing because he was Scottish. But he would, he would use those words, Heine Biney. I have heard those words from Christ. And they are words that pull me in and so deep into my spirit. Like I wouldn't even have remembered Aini Baini for 20 years. And all of a sudden there are those words coming from the Lord, touching me deep down in my soul, reminding me that I am loved and that I you know, am cherished in the way that my grandfather cherished me and, and wanted to have me with him. And so it's just the most amazing thing, I think, to discover in a long-term relationship with the Lord how perfectly he knows us, how deeply we're connected in our soul to this God of ours. And that's when we get to that fertile ground, you know, where the seeds within us begin to grow and, and bear fruit and become an integral part of the kingdom of God. We're all in it all the time. It's everywhere. It's around us. You know, you could just go out like this and touch it. It's right there. We're swimming in it. I think. And so we might as well go into it in the deep end because we're not going to drown. The Lord is going to protect us and keep us. I'm mixing metaphors here. Um, so instead of in the deepest water, think about the field that's got the very best soil in it and allow yourself to be plopped down as a seed into that soil. Amen. Join me now in the words of our Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain.
Sisters and brothers, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. By that same Spirit, let us pray, saying, Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of our lips, and teach us your judgment. O God, may the word of your kingdom find good soil in your church, cause your word to grow in our hearts, and bear an abundance of fruit. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Gretchen, our bishop, and Beth and Joan, our priests. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for all bishops. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of our lips. And teach us your judgments. God of our ancestors, we pray that divided nations be united and warring nations find peace. May we recognize that we are created by your will and are all members of one human family. We pray for Donald, our president, and our national and local governments. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tributes of our lips. And teach us your judgments. God of the harvest, bless the seeds and the soil of the world. Give us the wisdom to bring forth its yield wisely and according to your will, that all people may have enough to eat. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tribute of our lips. And teach us your judgments. Caring God, we are deeply troubled by the gun violence in our city. May all who set their minds on death, even now, be converted to the spirit of life and peace. We join the Daughters of the King as we pray for Victoria Flower, Mike and Sue Gunderson, Bob and Ruth Hamilton, and Rachel Hampton. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tribute of our lips. And teach us your judgments. Healing God, preserve the lives of the suffering and sick according to your word. Speak joy into the hearts of the sorrowful. For those on our prayer list, we pray for Chris, Leo, Brandon, Emily, Rika, Robin, Helen, Heather, Terry, James, Jamie, Pat, Carol, Annie, Alice, Doug, Dwayne, Barry, Carolyn, Brenda, Joan, Judy, Shirley, Mary Lynn, Jeff, Jan, Derek, Ruth, Bob, Marty, Porter, Nathan, Bob, Brian, Cherish, Dale, Joyce, Killian, Jeremy, Laura, Tim, Kathy, Margaret, Barb, Walt, Dwayne, and Bart. And give Jerry. Them courage and Jerry. Give them courage and hope in their distress and the strength to endure. We pray for social justice and the end to racism racism in our country. We pray for the protection of our police and all first responders. We pray for the protection of those who protest police brutality. We pray for those who are suffering from the coronavirus. Please add your own petitions at this time. Pray also for uh, the cash meters who are uh, in Iowa and will be driving back across the country. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tribute of our lips. And teach us your judgments. Eternal God, you preserve all who are in Christ Jesus for condemnation. By the resurrection of your Son, we trust that in the fullness of time, 
you will give life to our mortal bodies through his spirit that dwells in us. We pray for all those who have lost their lives to the coronavirus. Accept, O oh Lord, the willing tribute of our lips. And teach us your judgments. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I give to you. My own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city, where with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Well, it's time for birthdays and anniversary prayers and travel prayers. So I do believe we have some birthdays, do we not? Any birthdays? Any anniversaries? Well, is anybody traveling? Yes. Okay, Barb, traveling to the Oregon coast. Yeah. Well, okay. Where well, I we've got we've got we've got a whole bunch of traveling going on in our family. Joey and Camille are on their way here from Idaho right now, and then we're all going down to Eugene, and then Joey's going to have to go back to Oklahoma City by airplane. And all of that requires a lot of praying. Okay. All right. Mother Beth. Uh -huh. Kathy Paulson is hiking for three days this week on the Pacific Crest Trail. Oh, okay. So oh, pray wow. for her protection, please. Oh, we will. We will. And I'm uh, traveling to Idaho. Who's that? Wendy. Wendy. Oh, that's right. All right. And Bob Michelle and I are traveling to Seattle. Traveling. That's right. That's right. Oh, boy, it's going to be hard to work all that in. Um, I'm going to try. Let me see, we have Barb, um, Camille and Joey, and the rest of the windows. We have um, uh, Michelle and Bob going to um, Seattle. Yeah. We and, have- And Richard, a little day trip to Oregon. And Richard, a day trip to Oregon. You know, <laughs> I can tell you right now, I'm gonna forget all of that in the middle of this prayer. So all of you hold these folks in your hearts as we pray, but we're not praying for them by name. Okay. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from every danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Mother um, Beth, I would like a prayer for Bob for his surgery, if you could, okay. if, it, if this is the appropriate time. The appropriate time. Anybody else need prayers uh, this morning for healing? Um, uh, Ruth and Bob Hamilton, have requested prayers for a friend of theirs, and did I write it down? I did not. I believe, uh, Ruth and, or Bob, can you tell me his name? Ah. They don't have, they don't have audio. Oh, okay. Um, well, let's kind of remember in our hearts. Uh, Beth, Jeff. Yeah. Jeff is the gentleman's name. Yes, yeah. okay. All right. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, let us pray. Gracious God, we know that you long to protect us and watch over us, and you were the great healer of the sick and still are. We turn to you today on behalf of Jeff for healing for him, and we ask for swift healing and skillful surgeons to work on Bob's knee we pray for patience on the part of um, Michelle and uh, the ease of a trip back and forth to Seattle for them. Be with them every inch of the way, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Any other prayers needed? Beth? Yeah? Because of her prayers for healing, um, Ruth er wrote earlier that um, they are okay. Since we had a good week, Bob was able to receive chemo this week as his numbers were perfect. Don't go back until this, the 22nd. This is his week of rest. Okay, let's say a quick prayer for the Hamiltons too while we're at it. Gracious God, you have been with the Hamiltons every inch of the way we know. And we thank you for that gift. We thank you also for the continued healing of Bob and for his ability to receive the last end of the chemo. It'll go on for a while, but this is the, you know, this is the post-surgery chemo. So bless Bob, bring healing, continued healing to him, and bless Ruth, and bless their whole family. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through the worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray you so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit, that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Almighty and everlasting God, in whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Together, let's say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for your creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And also together, a prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions 
as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Spread, O oh spread, thou mighty word. Hymn number 500. <laughs> Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank <clears throat> you.